And I would love to um, hear your story about meeting Jesus face to face. Oh, <laughs> wow. If you don't mind. I, I'm very intrigued by that because I've had a, you know, some face to face encounters with, with Jesus myself. I was just oh. telling a friend of mine, um, one of them, you know, today. So, yeah. Oh, fabulous. All right. Okay. Well, let's see. I want to see how much I can share. I was a, um, a leader in a Bible study group and we met weekly. And, um, and I, I'm getting to my point, but, <laughs> but I, uh, one, one week we were talking about ask Jesus into your heart and, and become a Christian. And, um, and I, I got home that day and I thought, you know, I, I don't think I've ever really asked you into my heart, Jesus. I, you know, I've gone to church and I, and I, know you and I know everything I should know in the church but I don't think I've ever asked you into my heart and so I did and um, about two days after that <laughs> I got to uh, studying Acts and and a few other scriptures with with a friend of mine and we ran across the speaking in tongues um, being filled with the spirit and so on uh, scriptures that we apparently had just passed over uh, anyway I don't know why but we found it and you know really grabbed hold of it and and started questioning God and saying wow you know I I think I'd like to know about this and um, so once one day I was sitting in a chair at home we didn't have we didn't have our, any kids at that point, but I was sitting in a chair and I was listening to a song, which I, I, I don't know, it goes, I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, and lift my, and I lift my voice to worship you, all my soul rejoice, I think, are the yes. words. I, I that, don't know. Anyway. That is a, that's a Lori Klein song. Oh, is she's, it? she's from Spokane, Washington. Oh, all right. And I actually interviewed her for my Sozo Talk radio, um, oh. but only over email. So it's just going to end up being a blog. Maybe my wife will fill in for the, the voice of Lori. But yeah, oh, I've, I've been interviewing her via email, the oh. lady who wrote that song. And that was oh. one that I, that really, uh, that I sang a lot as a child, you know, walking oh, along yeah. trails and stuff. And yeah you know, in the car as we drove along. It's so, a great song. It's a wonderful song. If you talk to her again, tell her thank you. <laughs> okay. Because I, yeah, we used to live in Washington, so huh. I'm a Seattle girl, so I know Spokane. But anyway, so, I, so I'm listening to the song, and I'm hearing the, you know, I love you, Lord, and, and I raised my hands, which... At one point in my life, I had gone to a concert and everybody had their hands raised and I sat on mine because I said, there's no, absolutely no way I am raising my hands. Well, the song came on, you know, years later and I'm singing, worshiping with, I'm really worshiping with it. And I, all of a sudden I feel myself telling the Lord in, in song, you know, I love you. I love you. I love you. I really, really love you. And it became, um, he just baptized me in the spirit at that point. And it became just, uh, you know, speaking in tongues. And I, boy, I spoke in tongues for, I think, probably three hours without stopping. It was just, it was incredible. And as I did, um, Jesus walked over to me. And he had me put my head on on his shoulder. Well, I, I don't know that he even had me do it, but I did. I put my head, head up against his chest and he just wrapped his arms around me and, and just, you know, I, I just could feel the warmth of the love and I could see him and I could see his face and I could see the, the joy that he had in his eyes for me to be 
understanding the love relationship that that he has for me and and boy from that moment on i i just i sailed with him i had a uh, a vision one time where i was walking along a, a street and and i was looking up at the houses to my left and there was one house with a big picture window and and a, a high back chair kind of sitting at an angle in this window and there was a man sitting in the chair and as i walked by and i looked up at the window and i i waved you know and he he just kind of smiled and i kept walking down the street and as i was walking down the street i heard it i heard this voice coming from the chair which i saw through the window and the voice said um uh, don't pass me by come in and sup with me and i thought whoa okay <laughs> i know who that was sitting in the chair smiling as me at me as i walked by so and i've had a lot of encounters where where i've seen him and and just you know he he'll just show up and just and he's always it's just so much love it's overwhelming love to me it's never you know gosh i i i i don't know a lot of people say you know did you did you change well i changed in the fact I didn't have a horrible past at all, so I can't say that you know things got. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I, I yeah. had a great. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. So, but I, but yes, I did change because I fell in love with Jesus. He wasn't just someone that I went and talked about or heard about, but now I knew him and. And I, yeah, and that was my turning point. But there's been a lot of times where I've seen him. Yeah. So tell me about yours. I want to hear yes. yours. <laughs> well, my friend was asking asking me about my experience of Jesus, um, seeing him face to face. I've had, I, I told him, I said, there have been, I would say, five really powerful encounters with Jesus since my childhood. Wow. Um, that happened while I was awake. <laughs> There's a lot, lot, lot more that happened when I'm sleeping. I talk with Jesus in my dreams. Um, he comes and delivers me from demonic oppression in my dreams. I'll tell you what, tell you one, one encounter um, in a dream. I was being oppressed as <laughs> I think we all, all are. <laughs> you know, we live in the world and any of us can be under oppression if we right. you know, if we're not maintaining a close intimate walk with god and being filled with the holy spirit that's why the bible says be filled with the holy spirit it's a command like and, and it's a daily hey investing in that relationship you have this you've started this relationship let's invest in that relationship mm -hmm. and that's what keeps you shining and strong and the demons at bay because they're like, I don't want to get singed. No, that, that, that guy's blinding. The glory yeah. coming off that believer, you know. And then, But I haven't always lived my life so faithfully, and I get oppressed. I was, I was being oppressed by this, this demon, and Jesus came to me in a dream, and he says, Daniel, I've come to give you a greater revelation of myself. Ooh, wow. And the first thing that happened after he said that was a demon popped out of me. Oh, um, oh my, friend, my friend asked, this, asked the question, what did he look like? Like the demon. <laughs> I'm like, oh. that's actually a good question because I saw him pretty clearly. Oh. Uh, but I'm not going to say it because uh -huh. that, that might be like, you know, prototyping anybody, you know, whatever. Right, right. Um, but mm -hmm. anyway, so Jesus, um, this demon started arguing with Jesus like, but I have my rights and because Daniel did this and I have a right to be here and da 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 da. He's just wow. arguing. He just with Jesus demanding his legal rights oh. for me. Right. Oh. And what Jesus did, he just put out his hand and said, My blood. Ooh. My blood. And that was the end. The demon scampered off or the evil spirit. Oh, 
And uh, then the Lord filled me in that moment with his Holy Spirit. And it was just like, whoa, you know, like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and just loved me, loved me. Uh, He's done that several times um, over the years um, for me. The one face-to-face -face real, uh, one of the primary encounters I've had with him was I was at a nursing home doing a concert and decided to read scripture to them which i don't always do you know it's just a it's kind of a rare thing for me to open the bible and just like read a chapter to them or something <laughs> but i read the prodigal son story and as and as i was reading it um i got to the point where it says my son who once was dead is now alive i got to that part and jesus was materializing manifesting in front of me about two feet away just looking with his eyes of love directly into my eyes. Just mm -hmm. My son, who once was dead, is now alive. You know, he was just saying that to me. I just started bawling, and I could hardly look up because I'm like, "You love me. I don't deserve this. <laughs> you know, I'm not so faithful. <laughs> I'm not such a such a. I'm kind of a black sheep. You know, Jesus. You know, trying to convince him maybe that you know he shouldn't like me so much, but he sure does." Oh, he does. That's what oh, changes you. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And even just a little taste of how much he loves you, you know, changes, changes a person, I think. It's just, oh my gosh. Yeah. Pretty exciting. And we don't have to do anything. Keep saying that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You never have to earn love from our loving heavenly papa he created you to love you we don't need to try to earn the purpose for which he created us <laughs> no yeah right, right. And, and he no, said yeah no. and he says the works um the work of god is to believe in the one that he has sent you know that's our work that's in quote work mm -hmm. you know that's what we, that's what he wants us to do. And to receive love. You know, I, I tell people that the primary responsibility of every human being is to let God love you. And that changes everything. You'll be a world changer if you just do that. Just let God love you. <laughs>